Hi everybody, welcome back to the dungeon. Today, I'm going to give you a little discussion on sideband radio and how sideband works. It's a very simple demonstration and it's kind of uh, uh, has, has a connection to FM, but it is not FM. It's a thing of its own. So let's have a look at what it is. I'm going to set up this uh, uh, test bench to receive on 27.415 and that's the frequency we're going to be working with. So let's do that first. 27.415 megahertz. And during transmit, let's see if it's going to do the same thing. So I'm going to select it to FM and transmit. And now it's checking the frequency 27.41495. So it's 4 hertz off of frequency right now. 3 hertz and counting. So it's pretty much on 27.415 megahertz. That is a normal FM signal. When you look at the top over here, you can see there's just a carrier waveform. Even if I modulate, nothing going on there. Let me select AM. So now I'm going to transmit with AM. Again, if I do not speak, I get just the carrier. But as I begin to talk, one, two, three, four, five. You can see the one kilohertz, I'm whistling at about one kilohertz, you can see that one kilohertz superimposed on the carrier frequency. So that's amplitude modulation. Now let's take a look at upper sideband. And what happens with upper sideband is our carrier frequency of 27.415 will be shifted upward by the amount or by the frequency with which I am modulating it. So if I whistle at 1 kilohertz, then the transmit frequency will shift away from 27.415 and it'll go to 27.416. So let's have a look at that. There you saw it. It went up to 27.416 and a little bit because, of course, I'm not whistling at perfectly 1 kilohertz, but you get the general idea. And as I change the, 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 the frequency of that modulating tone, the, sh the frequency will shift upward accordingly for upper sideband and downward accordingly for the lower sideband. So now I'll select lower sideband and also modulate with about 1 kilohertz. And there you saw it went down to about 27.414, this 0.4139 something. So there it was shifted downward by 1 kilohertz. Now, of course, I'm going to go back up to upper sideband and demonstrate another thing to you. So there you see it's gone, 27.416. If I double the modulating frequency, so now I'm going to whistle actually one octave higher, which is double the frequency. So it won't be one kilohertz modulating, it'll be two. Then we can expect the frequency display to go up to 27.417. So let's see that. And there we saw the, sh the frequency has now shifted up by two kilohertz. Now I can't whistle at 500 hertz, it's too low for me. But I can try and go as low as possible and you can watch how the frequency shifts upward and downward on the frequency counter as I change the tone of the whistle. So it went up proportional to the frequency of the whistle that I'm putting into the microphone. And that is the principle of sideband modulation. Now during reception, the receiver will filter out the unwanted lower sideband. And during transmission, there's a, there's a crystal filter inside of the transceiver which will filter out the unwanted sideband and only use the selected. So it'll be an upper sideband or a lower sideband only. And that is through the use of filters inside of the transceiver. Another interesting thing to, to do when you're testing, if you happen to be testing a sideband transceiver, is to be sure be, the, that the uh, uh, 
the bias of your output stage is correctly set up. And the way that, a uh, very easy way to do that is on your oscilloscope, have a look at the RF signal. Now my test sy system over here is automatically set up to test that. And now we're going to look at the yellow trace. One, two, three, no, sorry, not the yellow, the green trace, the lower one. And it's a really nice, easy way to do. When you say Christmas tree, 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 you should see Christmas trees on the trace. And that's looking at the pure RF that's coming out during transmit. Tree, 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 you see them, Christmas trees, 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 Christmas trees, have yourself a merry little Christmas tree. And that's what you want to see. If you see big square blocky uh, railway trains, then your uh, your power amplifier is over biased, needs to be brought down. It's working too hard and you're going to get a distorted uh, signal because the frequency of your transmission, as I said, is affected by the frequency of your modulation. In other words, when you bring it, when you speak or something, it'll shift the frequency accordingly. But the amplitude, the intensity with which you speak, the volume, the louder and softer, is going to be affecting the overdriving of, the, of your output stage and that's going to introduce a lot of uh, a lot of distortion so you want to be aware of that so use the christmas tree technique say tree 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 one two three and then you'll see those nice christmas trees appearing one two three you may have to play with your uh, amplitude to get that uh, and then you'll see those appearing and that's a that's a good looking waveform for sideband modulation so that was it for sideband. I know it's very basic, it's very rudimentary, but it helps to give you an understanding. And before we go, let me show you now how I would receive on sideband for this uh, system. So let me just turn up the volume over there and over there. And what I'm doing now is I'm not produce, putting any modulation into my, uh, 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 my signal that is being generated from my test unit. All I'm doing is adding a frequency that is unmodulated. So no FM, no AM, a pure bare frequency. If I go in on 27.415 and I bring up the volume, I'm pretty much going to get nothing. Let me just uh, increase the amplitude here. Let's give it uh, 5 microvolts. So that now on 27.415 megahertz i'm generating it into the radio but as i crank up this volume i'm getting absolutely nothing in return there is no audio coming back and there's a reason for that let me just be sure that i've got audio apparently not let me see what there's audio there but i'm not getting it there oh, okay right so there's my audio So now I'm going on upper sideband. Let's turn that down for now. And right now, on 415, I'm not getting much. Because there is no difference between my tuned receive frequency and there's no frequency shift. So there's no output. If I had to go to 27.416, so frequency to 7.416 megahertz, now I'm getting a nice one kilohertz difference in the output. So let's get a listen to that very briefly. And there it is. And here I'm going to use the clarifier now. If you look at this frequency, it says 1,082, 83 kilohertz. And that would be, that would be what makes that, uh, uh, the, the voice of the person you're receiving sound a bit more like uh, Mickey Mouse. So turning your clarifier changes the offset of the frequency that's received and here my clarifier is now pretty well set close to a thousand hertz, uh, hertz as I can make it and there it is 
if I had to double the frequency offset. So now if I have to go in, in and put in 27.417, so 27 decimal 417 megahertz, I now have a 2 kilohertz audio tone coming up. And any difference that I put in there, so 27 point uh, four one two so this should give me nothing so it should be about four one four one four let's let's go twenty seven point four one five two megahertz it's now giving me a two hundred hertz audio signal which is barely audible Because the difference is 200 hertz so that's the principle of uh, sideband and i hope it was sort of informative for you and it gives you an idea of how to do a normal testing of a sideband rig what you would normally do is for the receiver you would set the frequency up at one ki kilohertz above or below depending if you're an upper or lower sideband so in this case 27.416 look for your one kilohertz output and now we can check the sensitivity of the receiver so let's get down there and if i i've got an auto sensitivity test which is really nice so i'm getting about 0.16 microvolts for a 12 db cyanide measurement which i know it's an fm measurement but I find it to be quite effective for sideband as well, which is a really, really good performance with this old radio. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more crazy stuff like this, and I'll see you soon. Bye.